All right, now what's up, Dragon Brew? Today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna hop back into back cover covers, colors, but we're gonna be trying to make a lot of golems or really just a lot of artifacts in general. And we're gonna get to play some new cards we haven't played with this season out of Thunder Junction and kind of one that got overlooked from a previous set. So let's get into it. We have got two Dusk Rose Reliquary. We are gonna be making a lot of artifacts. So this is a way to just deal with some creatures. Novus Inspector, which you probably know all too well by now, getting us a clue. We have Teething Wormlet, because we should be able to make artifacts just about every turn. Get Lost for some extra removal. Gala Greeters for some more of those artifacts. Tough Cookie, technically being two artifacts and also producing food, which can help. We're also gonna try an Old Tech Matter Weaver. So every time we play a creature, we can make a 1-1 one -one Golem or we can copy a token we already have. So we'll see how that works out. We're gonna be playing a full set of the Sandstorm Salvager, which makes a 3-3 Golem. And then we can pay three and tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on each token creature we control and they'll gain Trample. Assimilation Ages is also a very cool removal card. It can just remove a creature, but once you have something under it, then whenever you put it on one of your creatures, they become a copy of the thing that you removed. Could be useful later. Magator Purity Overseer. This is the old carter that we kind of forgot about, but it also produces a 3-3 Golem. And if we have three artifacts coming to play during the turn, which should be doable in this deck, we'll get an additional Golem. So we'll see. And of course, since we're playing all these artifacts and all these Golems, we're going to go ahead and try some Thousand Moon Smithy and see if it works out the way we want. And to make things easier, all except for the Smithy, it costs three or less. So with Kayla's Reconstruction, we should theoretically be able to get three, four cards every time into play, even for a fairly low cost. So we should be able to recover after a sweeper. That's the hope anyway. Now, there were a couple of other cards that we considered putting into this list. Yoshin Dissonant is one I decided uh, against because this is more about going tall, whereas we're trying to go wide with this list and just make more things instead of big things. And there was also an Urza that does fit this. However, the casting costs, even though it does pump all of our uh, artifact creatures, the casting cost did not fit well enough for what we're trying to do today. That being said, as always, if you want to download this, there'll be a description or be a link in the description below. And it'll take you to my Moxfield link where you can go and, you know, see a bunch of other stuff we've got going on in Standard. For now, though, let's go see if we can actually beat anything in the meta making a bunch of golems. Okay. Uh, whew, man, I guess we got to keep it. Like, I will say this for this deck, too. This is one of those decks where I've only played a handful of practice games, so I have no idea what's going to happen in this video. This, this might just end up being trash. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's not bad. I mean, if we can resolve it next turn, that would be cool. All the up with that and the smithy, that could be kind of sweet. Merfolk is what we're up against. Okay. Well, unfortunately, attacking into that will not do us a lot of good, will it? Okay, well, we at least got the land to be able to resolve the smithy next turn, so there's that. The other plus side is, against Merfolk, we can gain enough life that we probably don't lose too easily, but we'll see. Let's see what their game plan is here. I haven't played against a Merfolk deck in a minute. They sort of fell off pretty quick. Alright, well, we won't get to attack easily here either. So that's unfortunate. I mean, we could attack with the 3-3 and then... See if they'll block. If they do, we put counters on it. If not, meh. All right, they're letting it through. I just realized, okay, it would have sucked if that had to be played as a sorcery. I totally forgot to check that. All right. Oh, wait, this would have made another artifact. They could attack with death touch dudes. I would have had to give one up, but I totally forgot. I was thinking about... I forgot that the smithy itself is also an artifact, which is pretty key, honestly. Yeah, that was a bad no attack. I would have given up a wormlet to get rid of this, the uh, nameless city, honestly. Total mistake on my part. But next turn, we could fire this off possibly for two to put two things into play and see what happens. Like it's flying and hexproof. 
Enters the battlefield. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to, I don't even know what this card does. Enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains hexproof to end the turn, and then it gets plus one plus one has flying. All right, sure. Uh, we will not be getting rid of things here. If I just do this for two, we can just make a big attack here. I'm just going to go for it. It's not the most value we can get out of this. But we get to look at seven cards. So, I mean, come on. Alright, we'll take this and this. Yep. And then that triggers. And we get more life. Then we get to attack. Lots of many things. Whoa, not you, boss. Slow down. We lose our 3-3 Golem, but whatever. Cost of doing business. I was going to say, you got a block or you're taking 18, so whatever. And then we get a bonus Golem, and we get some extra life, because we had three or more artifacts under the battlefield. I was going to say, even if you make us pick everything up, I am not mad at this situation right now. And because we have the Salvager, we can even give that big 10-10 trample. Yeah, it looks like we're in pretty good shape. I mean, might as well get to attack for 5. We don't have any blockers. But our life total, I don't think, ever went below 20 in this one. If it did, it was just a hair. So no real concerns here. I could use this and remove something. But, uh... Why bother? This is not an artifact. So let's attack with this, 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 this. Actually, I guess I could have attacked with that. No, I wouldn't have had enough mana left over. Yeah, because it's three. All right. Sure. I mean, they have to bounce something here. Oh, that's not going to be enough. All right. I mean, this was a good first game. We kind of get to showcase all the stuff this deck gets to do here, right? Yeah, opponent says GG. Pump everything, give the things trample, and that'll be way more than enough. All right, good work. Okay, this looks... Oh, hold on. Yeah, we got to keep it. I mean, I can't get rid of it. I was just deciding when or slash where I'm going to play this Baris Headquarters. But I don't think it really matters. Because if we turn one Merrix and play Wormlet, we really don't have a play on two anyway. So this is more probably just play the Gallagreeters Gallagreter, and hope. I think is what we're doing here. Now, if we're up against a life gain deck, I mean, I guess we're just going to try to make death touchers. Oh, this is such a tough thing, because I kind of do want to block that here, actually. I think I'm going to... Eh, here's the thing. If it's not a life gain deck, though, this is a terrible block. Man, like... You know what? I'm just going to let it through. I'm going to gamble to try to beat them on the long game, and they can just gain life off of that. Actually, that's not a bad pickup here. Because I could tough cook. I'm not even going to do that here yet. I'll just use that to try to get rid of whatever else they have that's gaining a bunch of life, maybe. Um, Since I'm going to play an artifact anyway next turn, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Plus this. All right. Man, we got a Wormlet with Death Touch already. Ready to roll. Tough part is I don't know if I want to get rid of the food or the treasure. Because the treasure does actually allow us to do some fun stuff with Kayla's Reconstruction. So that could be a thing. What if I feel like the opponent wants to flash in something here? I am going to... Hmm. All right. Sacrifice the food. Even though I could attack with the 4-4 four, four here. Ah, man. 
Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because if they do happen to have a sweeper, I'd rather just Kayla's reconstruction after the fact. All right, that's fine. Don't love that fact, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Then we go ahead and play Tough Cookie pre-combat so we can get some stuff off the Gallagreters. All right, well, that's all it took, I guess. Okay, we're going to keep this. If our cards live and we get a third land, we could probably do some fun stuff. But, uh, well, they might here against this deck. Though, there is a real chance they're also playing... Ooh, yeah, we just play this. I going to say a real chance that they're playing Fading Hopes. So I'm hoping we either gain enough life that we don't have to worry about them playing their stuff that turns artifacts into creatures and beating us down. Gonna need some work from this Gallagreters and Tough Cookie. Ah, Hoverbike. All right, that taps the thing. Not what I expected to see, but doesn't really affect much on this turn. We couldn't block anyway. All right, so we're gonna go here. Taka for one. And then we'll try to set up some fun stuff starting next turn. Oh, are you gonna say no Gallagreters for us? Good news is we could still like replay greeters and Novus Inspector or something next turn if we have to. I kind of want them to spend mana here though so we can play the Sandstorm Salvager without too much concern. All right, Network Disruptor taps a thing, which is fine. We weren't going to block with the Gallic Greeters anyway. <laughs> All right, come on, opponent. I know you want to use that other blue mana. I can feel it in your bones. I know you want to. All right, I guess they don't want to. Not that badly. I mean, this could turn into an ugly race that we we may not win. But, oh, another Gallagreters. That changes things a little bit. Let's, let's sample this. Because I'm sure they have a counter, right? That's why you didn't do anything else? No, it's just Fading Hope, but it's Greeters. Okay, well, that's way less painful than the alternative. Uh, so we'll do this. Make a treasure. Gain some life. Back for two. All right. That turn didn't go nearly as bad as I thought. So now we could still possibly... Greeters and Salvager if we draw an untapped land. We could Greeters and Tough Cookie. Like lots of... I forgot what this guy does. Uh, this is... Enters a battlefield. Up to one target artifact you control becomes a 4-4 four, four for as long as that's there. Okay, that's fine. We will do some life gaining shenanigans here then. Let's go... Hmm. Hmm. As long as this remains in play. On the battlefield. So we could play this. Man, let me think about this. Because that's a real decision, actually. If we steal that, then that just becomes a 2-2 again. And we have 4 mana? Ugh. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter if I get the treasure now or not. We also have food we're going to be able to crack as well. So I guess it's not the end of the world. And we're going to gain a bunch of life here because Tough Cookie gains a life. We can choose to gain life off of the Gallagreters as well. Uh, this one we will take the life because the one point doesn't matter that much. This one will take the treasure because it's also another point of life. All right, and just attack with this. So now we have at least five mana, no matter what, next turn. So we can still crack food. We can play Salvager, which could be a whole variety of things. We could play another Tough Cookie and an Aegis. So should be still reasonably okay here. 
I'll say starting to reach a point where if the opponent has some defensive cards, they may be looking into them. All right. Good news is you need another artifact to turn into a 4-4 with that. Or is it just artifact or creature? Uh, target artifact. Okay. Plus, if we get rid of that, they have to pay to turn the hover bike into a creature each time. Uh-oh. What's this? They have some combat tricks? Oh, they're gonna ninja something. All right. That happened. <laughs> like, that's a real thing. Technically, this is an artifact as well, so they could turn that into a 4-4. Okay, I kind of want an untapped land here, actually, because I want to play Salvager and the Aegis, if possible. This is a fun card, but I think it has to wait. So I think we're going to Aegis. All right, so get some life, remove this knucklehead. Also, it could just remove this, but whatever I'm um, gonna go ahead and play this get more treasure I don't think the life total is enough to bother us there and uh, might as well get everybody in there all right so now if they attack they're risking death here and we're still at 15, even with all those attacks they sent our way. 15 with six life sitting on the table. And then if we get to play a salvager, then we get to make treasure. Okay, that's just it. Okay, this is not the fastest hand, but it's something. I think we go ahead and play this. Actually, mm, you know what? You know what? I should have just taken a point, played this, because I still could attack for one, and my board's still going to look basically the same on this turn. That was a little bit of a lazy play. I'd be down one life point, but actually technically two, because I would have had turn one and turn two. So I guess I'd be down a point, but so would the opponent's life total. Uh, who knows? Okay, how do we want to handle this? Definitely need that mana. Guess we're going to attack. They didn't flash anything in, so we're going to try to counter something, I am assuming. Um, Let's go with this, then. Oh, no counter. Wow. I wish I would have known. I might have tried to get the salvager down. I mean, there's got to be something happening, right? Because this just feels silly, but okay, we're attacking. My opponent's at 12. I, don't, I mean, if I play this, that's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We still wouldn't kill them, so I'm just going to pass. See, because they might have, like, depopulate or something. End of their turn, we'll just draw cards. Oh, they had three steps ahead, so they would have countered something if we played it. Oh, they're going to be reanimating some silliness. Well, that sucks for us. Wasn't even thinking about that. We might get got here, folks. Urza Silex. Well, that's exciting. And that's just everything, right? Each player chooses six lands they control, destroy all the other permanents. Uh, this gets rid of an artifact or just a creature. Exile artifact or creature an opponent controls. That sounds great. I like the sound of that. Let's do that. Because we don't want to have to mess with that. Alright, opponent's at six. I'm willing to play one of these. 
If they have a Sunfall, whatever. We draw an untapped land, then we'll just play Galag Readers and the Salvager. If they don't have Sunfall, then we're probably still okay. But I'm assuming they do have Sunfall. Unstable Glyph Bridge. So we get to keep a thing that costs one, costs two or less. All right, sure. Got a land. It was not what we were looking for, but it is fine. All right, opponent's at five. Jin Gitaxius. That's a card. All right, well, I guess we're going here. No attacks. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with mana value three or greater, you draw a card. Glyph Bridge can become a duder, I guess. Oh, you have to craft with another artifact, though. Oh, you can remove one from the graveyard. All right, so now if we attack, we can't cast spells. If we cast spells, we can't attack. Um, what do we do with this? Probably decline. That would be five. All right. What do we want this to look like? If I play tough cookie, all right, that's probably our way out of this. All right, pass the turn. So then we can turn the cookie into a golem for the food. And then we can pump everything to give them some bad blocks. And trample is probably like the best we can do. Don't think we kill them, though, but it's kind of close. Also depends, too, if they just have, like, Wandering Emperor here. We're probably going to be stuck. Man, I wish I would have known which way they were going. I didn't wasn't expecting them to be so artifact-heavy. I think we could have been more aggressive and turned out okay here. But, had no way to know. So now I have to play, like, let's say they have a Wandering Emperor. Gets rid of the 8-8. Eight, eight. They go to 9 then I just have a 4, 4, 5, 5, a 3, 3, and a 1, 1 attacking. That's not great. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Still doesn't solve our problem, but it's closer to being okay. They can't play this to copy because they need at least 4 mana for that. I'm likely to not be casting any spells here. That's not really in our game plan. I'm really just hoping they don't have a way to kill our 8-8, I think. Yeah, that can be bigger. It doesn't... This is just, do they have the card or not here? If they do, it's just going to suck for us. Alright, we're going to do the only thing we can do here. Hope it's enough. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. And? This is the part I feel like, and then? <laughs> oh, we did it. Oh, man. Woo. Oh, that was so good. Not going to lie, y'all. There were so many cards the opponent could have had there that I was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, are we going to be able to pull this off? Uh, I thought we were going to need a world where we were going to have to eventually turn the smithy into something, but the salvager came through giving tough trample. Okay, what can we do with this? Um, yeah, I mean, we have a couple of turns to draw land, so why not? Kind of have to play that on one because we don't have any real action here on turn two otherwise. Man, no respect. Just play with fire me. Okay. I see how it is. If we can get to like 
five mana and fire this off and get like Gallagreeters into something. Like we could actually do a little bit here. Okay, I thought they might have had another play with fire there, but they didn't. I guess we attack. They might just have like a rage. If they're not killing the tough cookie. Also, don't forget the tough cookies themselves can also be life, if necessary. Oh, I played the wrong one. I don't want the Sandstorm Salvager to die here. I meant to play Malkator. Dang it. The Salvager can actually be good late pumping creatures and stuff. Malkator just sort of does what it does if you have multiple things. Mm, all right. Rage, I guess we take seven. Doesn't really feel worth it to do anything else there. All right, we'll go here. And go here. I think I'll attack with what I can that makes sense. Probably going to need to use both golems to block here. And we're just hoping we don't get trampled for enough to kill us. Because we may end up having to crack food to stay alive. All right. Well, that's not going to get us dead, so that's the good news. Attacking for just three, attacking with that. All right. We'll double block that with some golems. Mmm. Teething wormlet. Wasn't really what I was going to gamble on. I was thinking I might just go all in on this Kayla's Reconstruction and see what we could find. However, this does change things a little bit. I could play the Wormlet, right? We could attack with... Let's see, we're probably going to rage something on the ground and use this. Alright, let's attack with this and this. Leave the others back. We do have a Death Toucher in the Wormlet. We have 11 life we have access to right now. 7 plus... Oh, actually, no. These are 3 more. So, 7 plus 6. We have 13. They use the Rage up top. Alright. Swift Spear. Annoying, but fine. It doesn't look like it kills us. I do not believe. I'm just going to, like, excess block in case there's a rage or some such. All right, there's not. Great. So then let's crack the... Well, yeah. Gain three. Actually, hold on. They're at 11. Yeah, we're not even close to getting them. 3, 4, 5, 6 remaining after combat. Uh, Yeah, can't get there. Alright, so we'll crack this for 3. And then we'll go ahead and crack this other food, because why mess around? Okay, so now we're at 4. Oh, I wanted that to be an untapped land so bad. Alright, well, we need these to hit something fierce or else we're just dead ah uh, you know what this sucks but we do get a point of life and we get to remove their dude so i mean it's not nothing Ugh. and we had another kayla's reconstruction go to the bottom there too not great um we're at five Right, they like a world of like, what is that card and what can you top deck that leads us to being dead? Those would have to be exactsies, and one of them would have to be like a rage or a play with fire, which they didn't have last turn. So I'm gonna gamble here and just attack. I mean, if they get us, they get us. Like, if those are perfect, perfect, then like so be it. Pump a slick shot. It is not. All right, so we go to four. Inspector will draw a card. 
gain a life if we need that. We can also turn one of these into a blocker as necessary. Let's go ahead and pull one of these. Malkator does make an artifact. All right. So we attack, attack, attack. Opponent blocks, blocks. Yeah, they probably don't even block, actually. Uh, all right. I'm going to attack with just the 3-3. Three, three. Actually, the two 3-3s three, can attack here, I feel like. Living a little bit dangerously, but why not? Okay, cool. I miss a point of life that way, so I should have done this pre-combat. Wasn't anticipating them blocking that way, so I could lose now. Because without that extra point. Well, didn't have to use that, though. Cool. Yeah, what I meant there is... With the worm let out, I could have got another point and went to six, which is a lot safer. Because if they just have, like some burn spell that like shoots me for two and then this gets like plus two that's five whereas being at six is a lot better admittedly if they still had lightning strike or drew one we die but being at six is definitely better at five because they have more things that could possibly kill me there fortunately didn't matter we withstood the major storm and the new cards came into play and did something hmm man um I'm going to mulligan this. I didn't know what to do with that last hand. It just didn't feel like anything was happening, unfortunately. Let's keep this... Um... Wrap this? Maybe I'm supposed to just get rid of the reliquary there, actually. So if we don't draw land, being able to draw cards would be nice, but... Is whatever. Let's see what we got going on here. Now, if we can get an untapped land here, we did, and then we get two creatures. Unless the opponent wants to kill something. Looks like they do not, so I'm going to get a treasure with the first one. And then I'm going to plus one on the other one. And I'm not even going to attack here because it's too likely they're going to flash something in. They didn't. There was a chance they were going to. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we're just going to tough cookie and try to attack with some 3-3s three next turn, then. If we lose things, we lose things. Ooh, actually, that's really good here, though. They have a stop during our upkeep. So they want to do something before we get to play another card, I guess. Not sure what they're thinking about, but they obviously have a play here. All right, they opted for nothing. Hmm. What was that about? <laughs> now, I'm a little bit uh, cautious here. All right, let's go here. I mean, I guess if they're going to sweep the board, they're going to sweep the board, but next turn. Okay. This is weird. Like, do I just... Hmm. Like, do we just take a treasure? And just don't attack for three more here? Nah, I'm gonna plus one. Who am I kidding? Like, if you have it, you have it. I don't know. I feel like I already missed some damage last turn. Alright, I mean, something's gonna die here. I don't know what's gonna die, but something. <laughs> oh, they're doing some smuggling. They're doing some big time smuggling. 
Oh man, hopefully don't have a depopulate here, because that would suck for us. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, we get to pump our team here. I mean, they could always have another. But I mean, but that's already 10. Okay, and they had something they're just choosing not to play there. Oh, they're saying GG's anyway, though. Alright, cool. Well, not a bad way to hit Diamond 2, I suppose. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be honest with y'all here. Like this deck leaves me in a little bit of a weird spot. We also didn't come up against like a mono black, which I would have wanted to see, but in a test game, we did do pretty well against them because we just keep making a bunch of creatures and we have Kayla's reconstruction, which is cool. But I I'm kind of like, you know, is this isn't an undefeated deck. I don't think so. Cause I even looking at this list. It feels like once you're goofing around with stuff like Malkator and and uh, the the Salvager or whatever, like this is the type of deck I feel like I could have easily tanked a whole rung of the ladder with just goofing off trying to find a workable list. That being said, one of the two of the benefits of the deck I think it has right now in the meta. One, there's a lot of life gain, right? Between Teething Wormlet and Gala Greeters and Tough Cookies. That's a lot to keep you alive against Mono Red and against the Boros decks. Also, being able to go very wide against the Burrow decks with three threes and larger, and even being able to give your creatures trample with the Salvager is really, really big. It gives you a chance to win those fights that other decks can't. And we can survive sweepers pretty well because several of our cards make extra tokens. So we're getting two for one a lot of the times just to rebuild our board. And stuff like Thousand Moon Smithy late in the game could just be a card that just keeps making us more and more dudes. So we do have some ways around most of the meta issues. Downside is we have Ultech Matter Weaver and we really didn't get to see this card in action. I was really hoping we would get it because I was curious kind of what it can do with the Gala Greeters or even getting us extra bodies with the Malkator, something like that. But, you know, overall, still not bad. I'll, I would leave it in the final list just so y'all can have it, try it out. Y'all can hop in the Discord, let me know how it works out for you. But overall, not bad. Happy with the deck. Can't be any happier than just chilling a whole rung of the, of the ladder, right? So, this is what we're going to post. Two Dusk Rose Well Aquary, three Novus Inspector, four Teething Wormlet, two Get Lost, four Gallagher, three Tough Cookie, two Old Tech Matter Weaver, four Sandstorm Salvager, two Assimilated, Assimilation Aegis, Four Malkator Purity Overseer, two Thousand Moon Smithy, four Kalish Reconstruction, one Plains Otterar Besaju, one Attica Waste, three Deserted Beach, two Sea Chrome Coast, three Brushland, three Overgrown Farmland, four Razor Verge Thicket, two Botanical Sanctum, one Dreamroot Cascade, two Sparse Headquarters, and Amerix. And again, there's other cards that didn't make the list that I considered in the beginning, like Yoshin Dissident, which I think is actually still okay. Not necessarily good or bad. Uh, there's also um, Mondrak. That's another one that I started out with this in a couple of test games. And I ended up pulling it because the card itself doesn't make artifacts. And while we do get to copy the others, usually if we're already going that wide and we have like Salvager, we're probably fine. But it's definitely something I considered for sure. So there are a few other cards you could put in here. So I say, you know, if you want to experiment, go for it. I think the old tech Matter Weaver basically says that we have at least two flex slots. So if there's a thing you want, I say go with it. I mean, have some fun with it. It's a fun deck. It's a fun list. Make it your own. My stuff's not the gospel. It did well in this video, but who knows? You might have some other favorite cards that actually just work better for you. And man, we're still doing so many crazy things with Thunder Junction. There's a lot of cards still to mess with. So we're only at the tip of the iceberg, but... We did have a crazy deck where we kind of insta-killed opponents with Calamity, the big horse, and that was a lot of fun, so check that out. But that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.